around 10% to 20% of couples worldwide are unable to conceive. As a result, not only is there a constant demand for sperm donors in the open market, but also an underground surrogacy market that is thriving. While studying in Korea, I joined the ranks of surrogacy assistants to earn some money and unexpectedly received help from Jean, the young lady of one of Korea's top financial families. I was studying at Seoul National University, Korea's highest institution of learning. Because my family wasn't wealthy and I had taken out loans to study abroad, I worked part-time at a Chinese restaurant while attending school. It was tough work with long hours. Point one day, Derek from my department approached me mysteriously. Brian, do you want to make some extra cash? Of course I did. Come on then, let's go donate sperm. Derek showed me a screenshot on his phone. It turned out that Seoul Sperm Bank, the largest sperm bank in Korea, had posted recruitment ads on our school's internal forum. As long as your sperm met their standards and requirements were fulfilled, you could receive up to $1,700 plus subsidies. This was too good an opportunity to pass up. In my mind, I calculated that since I have a rich reserve, it wouldn't be a problem to donate five times a week. It's such a waste to masturbate at home. If only I could exchange it for money, not only would I save on toilet paper, but also earn 200,000 yuan per month. It's simply amazing. On the weekend, Derek and I rode our bikes to Seoul Jinku as expected. We met many classmates from our school at the entrance who were there to make some extra cash. Some people covered their faces when they saw acquaintances, but I didn't feel ashamed at all. Earning money with one's own abilities is nothing to be embarrassed about. Please fill out this personal information form first. The receptionist was a young girl in her early twenties with fair skin and an extremely hot figure. She wore black-framed glasses and had an enchanting demeanor that was quite provocative. To my surprise, besides height, weight, blood type, medical history, including genetic diseases, marital status and education level, even ancestral hometowns of three generations back along with occupation and criminal records needed to be filled out on the form. After filling out the form and taking photos followed by multiple physical examinations ensuring no genetic or sexually transmitted diseases or bacterial infections existed, Daisy led us into room number 7 where we donated sperm. If anything happens during your donation process you can press this button. Daisy said with an ambiguous smile while pointing towards the emergency call button located inside the room before leaving us alone. The sperm donation room wasn't very big apart from collection boxes along with tissues and wet wipes. Sexy portraits of women hung on walls while shelves contained stimulating magazines which played R-rated movies repeatedly on TV screens mounted onto walls. Now that we were here in person donating sperm, finally understanding why South Korea has so many sexy female groups, these little wildcats seduced men with their provocative movements of tossing their hair shaking their hips and licking their lips while touching themselves, arousing men's desires more than those Japanese adult films where women are pushed down right away. Although I had plenty of experience with the five sisters in love-hate relationships, I still felt nervous and uneasy in this environment. After calming myself down a bit and watching two band music videos, I finally felt it. Coming. However, this time my passion was too intense that even the collection box was almost full but still overflowing. Worried about making a mess and facing compensation claims, I could only press the emergency call button. Daisy quickly came in to check on me as I shyly tried to cover myself up. But Daisy didn't seem to mind at all as she smiled and said, Older brother, you must have been holding back for a long time. You should find yourself a girlfriend. Then she picked up the cup without changing her expression and drank more than half of it before putting the container back in its place. Appa, continue. She said, huh? Is this okay? I was completely confused. Seeing my expression, Daisy smiled even more charmingly. Actually, I'm already 36 years old this year. Do you want to know the secret to my eternal youth? But don't tell anyone outside. Fifteen minutes later. I left the sperm collection room with the collection box in hand. Daisy carefully labeled it and told me that after purification processes such as virus removal, bacterial removal, and infection clearance were performed on the sample, 
an evaluation of sperm quality would be conducted before issuing a report on whether or not it met standards. Take Seoul's Sperm Bank, for example. There are thousands of applicants each year who wish to donate their sperm but only about one-tenth meet requirements after undergoing various complex screenings, including genetic testing. The rest are eliminated from consideration altogether. Those who do not qualify can receive some compensation but should not expect to get rich by selling their sperm. Hearing this news left me feeling somewhat disappointed turns out making money like this isn't so easy after all. A week later Derek received a call from the sperm bank informing him that he did not qualify due to his low concentration. I was much luckier though. Hello Mr. Brian. They said over the phone. Please come visit our sperm bank for further collaboration. The two million won you earned from your previous donation will be deposited into your account within three business days. Upon receiving this call notification in my bank account confirmed receipt of payment as well naturally leaving me feeling happy and excited about what kind of deep collaboration might lie ahead. Join the fertility club. Natural sperm donation? In the reception room, I exclaimed in surprise at Daisy's words. Natural fertilization allows the woman to conceive normally. Doesn't that mean having real sexual intercourse? Daisy was not at all concerned about my surprise and patiently explained to me the ins and outs of it all. It turns out that in Korea, besides regular sperm donation, there is also a huge underground sperm market. And this fertility club was established because IVF, in vitro fertilization, is a very complicated matter. It requires many painful treatments, cannot guarantee success on the first try and formal treatment fees are very expensive which not every infertile couple can afford. At the same time, many couples who can afford it economically do not want to go through official channels for sperm bank procedures as doing so would leave records of their IVF attempts. They do not want their privacy recorded in files. Even many women who come for sperm donations want to hide it from their husbands. They will never take an official route. So underground sperm donation came into being due to these needs. These clients obtain donor medical reports through official channels and after confirming that the semen is qualified, they look at photos of donors' faces and educational backgrounds, etc. If everything matches up well then they arrange private meetings with them where natural conception takes place allowing themselves to become pregnant naturally. For women, both success rates and personal feelings are greatly improved by this method it's more enjoyable than painful, as members of our fertility club collectively known as fertility assistants. We hold high-quality semen samples which have strong vitality with good looks no bad habits or criminal records making us highly sought-after candidates for membership within such clubs that we become reserved talents for sperm banks, especially in recent years when many Korean women desire mixed-race children who are even more beautiful or intelligent than pure Koreans. Overseas students like myself are the key targets for recruitment by fertility clubs. To put it simply, Seoul's sperm bank is more popular for providing secret fertility services than formal IVF procedures. Sperm donation costs 2 million won per time while assisting pregnancy earns 5 million won per time. Plus, I can enjoy springtime with different women. And no matter how you look at it, there is no loss. Of course, the only risk is to avoid the dog blood situation of marrying close relatives in the future. Fortunately, if my son doesn't come to Korea to marry a wife in the future, we can avoid this. From then on, I began my glorious career as a surrogate mother, and my life underwent earth-shaking changes. I helped five Korean women conceive naturally within three months with a 100% success rate, and was hailed as a sharpshooter from China. Each time I received about 30,000 renminbi as compensation. With this money, I paid off my study loan and finally could afford to eat pork belly. However, I have principles donating sperm without personal feelings involved. Once emotions are mixed up in such matters it becomes very troublesome like what happened with my sixth client Ella who is 31 years old and works as an office worker. We had been dating for two months and slept together more than ten times, but she still didn't get pregnant. It turned out that she took emergency contraceptives every time she went back home. She never wanted to get pregnant. She just used this excuse to sleep with me. But I am a surrogate mother not a midnight cowboy. 
while selling sperm may be acceptable but selling dignity isn't. In anger, I put her on the blacklist and told Daisy that we won't take any orders from her again. Knock, knock, knock. The sound of knocking interrupted him after work hours, besides annoying Ella who else would come looking for him. Get out. I won't serve you any more. He stopped halfway through his sentence because it wasn't Ella who came in but rather an elegant mature woman, someone famous too. Jean, the granddaughter-in-law of a top Korean chable. When I first came to Korea, I happened to witness the century-old marriage between two of Korea's largest chable families. Several major newspapers and TV stations in Seoul are owned by Jean's family. The wedding was jointly broadcasted live by three major Korean TV stations. At the wedding, Jean in her white dress was hailed as the most beautiful bride with an aura that outshone many entertainment stars. What caught my attention about this news is also quite interesting. It turns out that I look very similar to the grandson of this Jable family. In fact, some even say that I am more handsome than him. Even with careful makeup, you can still see his face looking tired and haggard from excessive drinking. At that time, my classmates joked with me asking if I was their illegitimate child. Jean not only comes from an amazing background and is stunningly beautiful, but she is also a talented woman who is a famous fashion designer and runs an art gallery. After marriage, she often graces the covers of various fashion magazines and leads at the forefront of Korea's fashion industry. She has been dubbed the nation's daughter-in-law and Korea's number one young lady. I never thought today she would become my client. A goddess will always be a goddess. With her tall figure wrapped in black leather clothing, Jean exudes sexiness beyond what we see on television screens. Her waistline so slim, her chest so perky, her legs so long, and those eyes are sharp like daggers making men feel inferior before her presence wanting nothing more than to kneel down or crawl at her feet just for a chance to be hers. I have reviewed your profile, said Jean sitting across from me while crossing one slender leg over another. You meet my requirements. That pair of black silk long legs, they make me obsessed. I ordered your services. For the next period of time, you will serve only me. As long as you let me naturally conceive, I will pay you one billion Korean won. She lightly moved her fiery red lips and said to me, What? You want me to help you get pregnant? I was completely confused. What qualifications do I have for this? I actually had a chance with the nation's daughter-in-law. What's wrong? Are you afraid to do it? Do you lack confidence in yourself or your sperm quality? If so, forget it because I don't like weak men. Jean's tone carried a hint of provocation. She even deliberately pushed out her chest to show off her impressive figure. I'll do it. Of course I'm not afraid. Not doing it would mean that I'm not a man. Stimulated by her words, I blurted out my response. Being egged on by this woman, my impulsiveness led me to agree. First and foremost was because of the money. As expected from the wife of a wealthy family, she is generous. One billion Korean won is equivalent to more than 500,000 RMB. Moreover, being able to conquer such a goddess, there are countless men who would go crazy over this opportunity even if they had to pay instead. But why did such good fortune fall upon someone like myself? Could she be trying to deceive or harm me? However, after some thought, what does an impoverished guy like myself have that could attract the attention of such a beautiful and wealthy woman? Do we look alike, perhaps? Is she using me as a substitute for her husband due their marital problems? But in front of Jean's powerful aura, these questions were too risky for me ask. You're very smart. Jean smiled contentedly. Sign the agreement. She threw an agreement at me. Jean was very meticulous, and the agreement was written in Chinese, English, and Korean. It stated that I would receive a reward of 100 million Korean won to allow Jean to conceive naturally with my sperm. However, the time, place, and frequency of sexual intercourse were all arranged by Jean. I had to be available 247 without any refusal or delay. At the same time, the contract stipulated that there could be no intimate behavior other than sperm donations such as kissing. During the contract period with Jean, I was not allowed to have sex with other women. Once Jean successfully conceived, 
Either she nor her child would have any relationship with me whatsoever. I was not allowed to approach Jean or her child in any way or claim my rights as their biological father under any circumstances. The contract contained strict breach and confidentiality clauses. Although it looks scary, I still signed it because donating sperm is not a glorious thing. Why would I go out and talk about it? Besides, in Korea's Chable society, large family-owned conglomerates, power is everything. Of course, I wouldn't seek excitement on my own either isn't. Father loves his son. Just seeking death when fighting for inheritance. Ms. Jean, when is your ovulation period? Also, I need you to undergo a physical examination so we can choose the most suitable fertilization time. Since joining this surrogacy club and going through several practical exercises already, I am quite experienced with the whole process now. I in Seoul's sperm bank there is a special examination room specifically for us surrogate mother's use. The privacy protection here is excellent. There will only be one paper copy of each report, and no information will be stored on servers. To maximize confidentiality. I'm already quite skilled at using all of its instruments. I don't need nurses' help anymore. 4. Female examinations, it's not complicated, mainly looking at the development of the uterus and fallopian tubes. We also check if menstruation is regular to choose the best time for sperm and egg fusion. Jean was not a fussy woman. Upon hearing my words, she showed no shyness but went straight with me to the examination room. I in front of me. Without any hesitation, she loosened her clothes and lay on the examination bed with her crystal clear body. Hurry up, I'm in a hurry. Looking at the beautiful woman in front of me, it's fake to say that there is no impulse. I really want to blend with her right away. But according to the agreement, only Jean can propose this matter before I can take action. Otherwise, I only have the power of suggestion but not initiative. Swallowing my saliva, I began to use instruments to examine Jean's body. Ah, uh, she is a fully ripe woman. South Korea is a country where plastic surgery is popular. Most of the beauties you meet on the street are artificial. But obviously not Jean. She is truly naturally beautiful. Her beauty, fullness, slimness and depth are all fascinating. But these are not what surprised me most. The most surprising thing is that she's still a virgin. The young wife from a wealthy family and the most beautiful bride who has already become such an attractive mature beauty like Jean turned out to be perfect without being destroyed or invaded or repaired afterwards. How could this be possible? Don't be surprised. Said Jean as she put on her clothes. My husband and I have a business alliance without feelings involved. Have you finished checking yet? I have an art exhibition to attend. Even if there were no feelings between them though how could that playboy from a wealthy family who was famous for his love affairs resist entering every day? Letting such a charming beauty remain unattended for so long? It's really wasteful. My heart was filled with nervousness and unease because Jean was going to have sex with me, before, I thought she was a fragile and easy to push down. Young woman who wouldn't say no. There were no reservations. But now, she is still a virgin. If I have sex with her, then I will become the first man to possess her. The nature of the matter would be completely different. It seems that Jean has seen through my thoughts as she calmly tells me while fastening her BRA.AS the son of a wealthy family. Clifford has been addicted to alcohol and women since junior high school. Especially after studying abroad later on. He indulged in all five vices wealth, lust, anger, greed and delusion. As a result, he has already been emptied out and turned into a useless person. He simply doesn't have the ability to perform sexually. To save face this secret has always been hidden. The two are called husband and wife but they actually live separate lives. Recently, Chan's old chairman wants to make his will which involves property distribution issues. She and her husband must have children in order for them to receive large shares of stock so they decided to try IVF, in vitro fertilization. They also want natural conception instead of using sperm banks so that their pregnancy secret won't be exposed. Listening to Jean's story, I couldn't help but feel a little sorry for her. It turns out that behind her glamorous appearance, she has been living alone all this time. They say that the marriage of wealthy families is always a transaction 
And isn't the tragedy of this woman right in front of us a vivid example? She was deceived into marrying him. Jean seemed to have noticed my sympathy and said coldly, Remember your place. Don't meddle in things that aren't your business. If I hadn't known early on that Clifford was useless, I wouldn't have married him. I really get too emotional when reading Three Kingdoms. Can someone like me really manage the affairs of wealthy families? Saturday is my ovulation period. I'll come pick you up then. Jean said before leaving with her Hermes handbag and long legs. To be honest, I felt somewhat humiliated. In this young lady's eyes, I'm just a tool. She didn't even care about me at all. Just wait until we're in bed, see how I'll deal with you. I thought resentfully. At the same time, however, there was also an eager anticipation for that moment that I received a call from Jean while at school. She asked me to wait for her outside the school gates. Hurriedly taking a shower and changing into new underwear as well, I ran to meet her outside the gates whereupon she instructed me via phone message. Go upstairs. On the left side of the road stood a five-star hotel which led me by elevator up to its rooftop terrace as per Jean's instructions only to find myself surprised by what awaited there was already a helicopter waiting for me. Jean wore an aqua blue dress today with high slits revealing those beautiful legs shimmering under sunlight like sparkling crystals. I stared blankly at her beauty and couldn't help but swallow my saliva. Speaking of which, these past few months as a surrogate mother have been filled with wild and erotic stories every night. Although the previous female clients were not necessarily stunning beauties, they each had their own unique charm. For example, Ella may not have had an exceptional face but her 30-60 figure made for unforgettable nights spent together. But standing before me now was Jean who looked like a goddess. I felt like an inexperienced virgin boy. Trembling with excitement and shyness, Jean waved at me impatiently, saying, What are you waiting for? Come on up. Only then did I finally move to board the helicopter. To my surprise, Jean was actually piloting it herself. The helicopter spiraled upwards into the clouds while I sat behind watching her fly. She was both beautiful and cool. After half an hour of flying out of Seoul city center we landed in a mountain estate whereupon I followed Jean inside one of its villas located on the east side. The villa was huge and luxurious. Even just one bedroom alone could fit a basketball court-sized space. The heart-shaped bed in the middle could easily accommodate ten people lying down. Jean entered the bedroom casually tossing aside her handbag and kicking off her high heels. I'll go take a shower first. She said and walked into the bathroom. I wanted to join her for some fun in the water, but I was worried that she might not agree, so I anxiously waited outside. Bored and wanting to check my phone, I realized that not only was there no signal here, but there was also electromagnetic interference. The screen flickered with garbled characters and couldn't be used normally. It must have been to prevent spying? Rich families are indeed cautious. I thought women took a long time to shower but Jean came out wearing a silk bathrobe after just five minutes. Before that, she had her hair up high in a bun and showed off her swan-like slender neck, appearing cold and proud untouchable by strangers. Now after bathing, her long hair flowed like waves down her back while her face blushed with a layer of water droplets exuding more softness and allure as a woman. Jean, you look beautiful. I couldn't help but speak out, but Jean's voice remained as cold as ever. I don't want to hear these meaningless compliments. Go wash up quickly. Also, although I don't kiss people on the lips, at least brush your teeth three times. After speaking those words without looking at me again, she sat on the bed closing her eyes for rest. I felt depressed inside feeling like an ancient male concubine serving the empress in BD. So went into the bathroom again washing myself carefully once more before brushing my teeth three times then coming out saying, I'm upstairs. Jean shook off her clothes giving me orders one after another. From then on we had deep physical contact which felt like it was all just part of my dream. Her flowing long hair, half-closed eyes, flushed cheeks gave me ultimate pleasure. At the same time though, I also discovered that Jean was a terrifying woman. Even though she went through transformation and suffered greatly, throughout the entire process she tightly bit her lips and refused to make any sound or show even a hint of tenderness beyond physical intimacy. 
she strictly followed our agreement of treating me as just a tool without giving me anything more than merging together. Later on, when she finally got tired, instead of spending some time with me in warmth and affection, she said, Go to the bedroom next door. Without looking at me again, she stood up on the bed upside down. My emotions were complicated as I left the master bedroom. I know she chose to do a headstand at this moment for a better chance of getting pregnant. At this moment, I have a sense of twisted pleasure in my heart. It's better not to succeed all at once. That way, I can enjoy it more times. I slept until midnight, feeling drowsy and confused. Then I felt a hot body slip into my bed. When I opened my eyes, it was Jean. I was very happy in my heart. Does this mean that we've grown fond of each other? She didn't want me to sleep alone tonight. She wanted to comfort me tenderly. But then I heard Jean's cold voice. Hurry up and increase efficiency. I hope you get pregnant soon. That night, Jean and I tossed and turned until three o'clock in the morning. Especially when Jean finally couldn't help but make noise, my sense of accomplishment grew even stronger. Originally she wanted to go back to the master bedroom, but I pulled her hard and wouldn't let her go. She was exhausted and couldn't break free from me so she just nestled in my arms and fell asleep. Holding on to this beauty made me feel like I really owned her doubt I in our line of work. We can do anything except develop feelings. But with this cold glamorous woman... I feel like my feelings are different from those towards other women. The exhaustion from last night made me sleep late the next day. Then someone pushed me awake. Don't be silly. Instinctively wanting to hug Jean but instead finding nothing there. When I opened my eyes again, the jade person in my arms had disappeared. Then suddenly realizing with horror. The man who woke me up is Clifford a wealthy young man who looks somewhat similar to myself. Damn it. Just slept with his wife last night only now caught red-handed. My sweat broke out instantly. Am I going to die? These Korean chables can kill a foreign student as easily as crushing an ant. My heart is filled with fear. To my surprise, Clifford not only didn't get angry, but also laughed. You worked hard last night. You still need to continue before Jean gets pregnant. I was shocked. So he knew about it too. At this moment, Jean walked in wearing sportswear like he had just finished exercising. Seeing Clifford, his face turned cold. Who let you in? We agreed not to interfere with each other's private lives. Anyway, you just need a child to fight for the inheritance. Don't worry about anything else. From Jean's tone of voice, it seemed that their marriage had long been dead in name only. Clifford chuckled. Jean, don't be agitated. We are all partners and have common interests. I hope your plan will succeed soon so I won't disturb you anymore. You guys continue. After speaking, he left with a light laugh. These rich people are more twisted than one another. Get up and eat breakfast. Also, no matter what Clifford says to you or how he contacts you privately. Jean took me to the restaurant. The dining table was filled with sumptuous food. Especially eye-catching were the oysters, turtle soup, and tiger penis wine. I felt a warmth in my stomach as I looked at them. Was Jean trying to give me more firepower by providing me with these delicacies? Since then, I have been living in this mountain villa and enjoying a life that is enviable even for immortals. Jean is very considerate, not only giving me the best material conditions but also showing me extreme tenderness at night. However, he is also very indifferent. Apart from work-related matters, we do not communicate any idle talk or personal feelings. It's like I'm just a wind-up humanoid pile driver. What's worse is that I find myself becoming more and more attached to this woman. Isn't this playing with fire? One day, Jean had to go back to Seoul for something. He gave me the night off so that I could rest up properly. Just as I was about to go to bed early, a black-suited bodyguard suddenly came looking for me. The young master wants to see you. I felt uneasy and didn't want to go see him since Jean wasn't around. However, there was no way for me to refuse either. So nervously following the bodyguard through several courtyards until we reached another independent villa where screams of agony could be heard coming from inside. It sounded like someone was being tortured. Terrified out of my wits now, 
but the black-clad bodyguard pushed me forward into the bedroom where three or four burly men wearing nothing but leather loincloths each holding whips were taking turns whipping a heavily made-up woman who was tied up against a pillar. The woman screamed in pain as her skin split open under their lashes. And then it hit me she wasn't really a woman after all it was Clifford himself dressed up in drag. He was a masochist. Who else would dare to torture him like this? This realization sent shivers down my spine and made me think of what Jean had said to me before. This man has been played out. And he's become perverted. Although Clifford was beaten painfully, he had a look of ecstasy on his face. As soon as his subordinates put him down, several professional doctors immediately came forward to bandage his wounds. Clifford lay in a large massage bathtub and instead of being served by beautiful women, Several men helped him with bone massages. It turned out that this pervert's orientation had changed. While moaning in pain, Clifford gave me an electronic device shaped like a watch. Take this high tech device that can avoid electromagnetic interference. Record the entire process of you and Jean being affectionate towards each other. After it's done, I'll give you one billion. He stated his request. Why? Aren't you supposed to stay out of each other's business? My intuition told me that Clifford had ulterior motives for doing this. That woman is too arrogant. She has never taken me seriously. We are in a business alliance and cannot divorce, but I am also her husband. I cannot let her ignore me like this. It's fine if she gives birth to an illegitimate child to inherit my property, however, I hope she will have enough respect for me in the future, such as agreeing to play such exciting games with me. Clifford laughed lasciviously. His laughter made my hair stand on end. After laughing, he showed madness on his face. That woman always looks like an ice-cold goddess normally. I'm really curious about how she acts slutty in bed. Several times when I wanted to take her to exchange clubs or play with us dear ones together crazily were all rejected by her. How could she treat her own husband like nothing? Clifford's words gave me goose bumps all over my body. This man is truly despicable. He couldn't be humane himself but allowed both his male lover and wife do whatever they want just so he could satisfy his abnormal desires. I really felt sorry for that woman. Even if she had status, power and influence, she was still a pitiful woman. I won't agree. It's not in line with the contract I signed. I can't betray Miss Jean. I firmly refused. Who do you think you are? A Prince Charming? A love expert. Do you really think that arrogant woman likes you? She is just using you. Don't be shameless. Clifford got angry and no longer let the man serve him. Instead he walked out of the bathtub. Pointing at my nose with her finger, she said. Remember your place. I know she's using me. But I'm willing to be used by her. I won't betray her. I shouted. What greeted me was a brutal beating from Clifford's men. They beat me until my face was bruised and swollen. Enough. At the critical moment, Jean appeared in time. She saved me and looked coldly at Clifford. You've crossed the line. He belongs to me. You can't touch him. Clifford's face turned dark. Jean, remember our agreement. Playing is fine, but don't play with fire. This kid obviously has feelings for you. He can no longer stay by your side or he might become a problem later on. But Jean retorted sarcastically. Clifford, you should worry about getting age yourself first. You don't need to bother with my affairs anymore. Otherwise, I'll reveal your secret and see who will lose face. After leaving the Chen family, I am still Miss Jean while you are just a poor rabbit. Get out of here! Clifford yelled hysterically, ignoring him completely. Jean took me back to her villa. I told you not to leave without my orders. Jean reproached as she bandaged my wounds on the sofa. Sorry for causing trouble. I explained nervously. Sit still and let me take care of it. Although her tone was stern, her movements were gentle as she applied medicine onto my wounds. Why didn't you agree to Clifford's request? That's one billion yuan. She suddenly asked me. I don't want to betray you. Slipped out of my mouth. You fool. 
Jean seemed somewhat disdainful but became even more meticulous in treating my injuries. We were very close together feeling each other's breaths like orchids despite having already had close contact before. But somehow, at this moment, I felt closer to her than ever before. What are you looking at? Jean, thank you. Cheesy. Jean scolded me but I noticed that her face was slightly red. During the recovery period, Jean didn't let me touch her. After a week, she was healed. Clifford never appeared again. So this became our own world of two people. We continued to be intimate day and night. It seemed no different from before, but some things had changed. For example, there were a few days when it was clearly safe and the chance of pregnancy was low, but we didn't reveal it and still worked hard at it. For example, when we were doing things together she still didn't like to talk much, but she no longer stuck to controlling her posture and allowed me to take charge instead. Point one, two. When the 27th pregnancy test finally showed two lines, I knew my mission was over. I felt lost in my heart. Jean threw the pregnancy test into the trash can. It might not be accurate. Let's try again tomorrow. So that night we spent another passionate time together as Jean screamed for once in her life. I in her ecstasy I cried without any dignity. For the first time in my life I experienced the pain of heartbreak. But I dared not let Jean notice my tears because I knew that I wasn't qualified to love her. The next morning we tested again. Still two lines confirmed pregnant. This time there was no reason for me to stay any longer so it was time to say goodbye. I had nothing with me except for hands in. Pockets as I left. Take care of yourself well and also take care of your child. With a heavy heart I advised Jean. Jean wore large sunglasses on her face which made it impossible for me to see what expression she had on. Then, I'm leaving. I walked towards a black Mercedes parked outside near the mansion gate driven by one of Jean's trusted aides. After walking several steps away from them suddenly turned around running back towards where Jean stood looking startled. What? What are you doing? She asked in a panic tone that I took out the 100 million one check from my pocket and handed it to Jean. The child is the fruit of love. I don't want him to be tainted by money. At this moment, I have made a decision. I don't want Jean's money. That way, I still have the qualification to miss her. My career as a surrogate mother ends here. After graduation, I will return to my country and leave this land full of memories and reluctance. I will try my best to forget about this beautiful yet aloof woman, although it is difficult. Jean obviously didn't expect me to return the money to her, and was about to say something when suddenly I pushed her hard with my hand. Be careful! Because a big tree at the entrance of the estate suddenly fell down, I was worried that Jean would be hurt so I threw myself onto her delicate body. We both tumbled down together in an awkward mess. Jean, are you okay? I asked with concern. I, I'm fine. Jean lowered her head and straightened out her clothes but dared not meet my gaze. He's fine, what's wrong is you? This big tree was supposed to hit you but instead gave you a chance for heroism. But your performance has ended. A cold laugh sounded out as Clifford appeared after several days' absence followed by four fully armed bodyguards. What do you want? Instinctively wanting to protect Jean from harm, I asked him. You don't need to protect her, we're partners now. What you need to worry about is your own life. Clifford sneered. You don't think that I'll let you leave alive right? How can anyone know my secrets? I was shocked. He wanted me dead just so his secret wouldn't get out. I'll keep your secret. Only dead people can keep secrets forever. Clifford waved his hand and his men had already restrained me while one of them took out a needle flashing blue light it must be poison. Without asking any questions. They were going to inject me with it. Jean, save me. I could only plead for Jean's help. But Jean turned her head away and didn't look at me. Foolish boy. Did you really think she would save you? You're the biggest stain in her life. She wishes you were dead. I told you before that she was using you. Don't they have an old saying in your country? When birds are gone, the bow is put away. When rabbits die, dogs cook them. Now that you're no longer useful to us, we are each other's most stable allies for inheritance purposes even if we don't get along well. 
Clifford sneered at me while watching the needle pierce my skin. Brian, do you have anything to say before dying? Or do you want to curse me? Finally speaking up, Jean asked, What can I say now? Curse him? Regret it? It won't change anything. In fact, besides their conspiracy being the root cause of all this mess, there was also my greed, love of money and lust. One wrong step led to another until there was no turning back. I should hate myself most of all. There is no such thing as a free lunch in this world. Those pies are traps and pitfalls. And until this moment, I still couldn't bring myself to hate Jean too much. I gave a bitter smile and said, Jean, take care of our child and give him a good life. Don't let him be like me, misled by fame and fortune. I wanted to say more but lost consciousness and fell into endless darkness. Am I dead? A glimpse of Wei Liang appeared before my eyes, gradually bringing clarity to my senses, but I had no idea where I was now. Alive or dead? You just finished surgery, don't move. A soft hand reached over and held me down. It was Jean. She was still so beautiful but looked somewhat haggard. Did she save me? My heart was filled with joy at having survived the ordeal. I tried to speak but was silenced by her lips on mine. It was our first kiss together, wet yet fragrant, truly sweet. After the kiss, she gave me an enchanting smile, saying, Clifford, take your time telling me what you want to say. We have plenty of time as we have a lifetime ahead. Clifford? Was she calling out for me? But my name is Brian. As if knowing what's going through my mind, Jean picked up a mirror and placed it in front of my face. The reflection showed not Brian but Clifford. Where did Brian go? Where did the real Clifford go? Jean whispered softly in my ear. That psycho has disappeared forever. From now on you are him, thanks to Korea's best plastic surgeon that nobody can tell the difference anymore. Our child will be taken care of by us both. No one wants to serve a psycho, his bodyguards are already under my control. Congratulations! You passed my test, not only are you the father of our child, but also the man I was destined to be with. I've come to realize that true love exists in this world. When you refused that one billion won and risked your life to save me, I was already conquered by you, honey, I love you. My heart was filled with mixed emotions. I couldn't even utter a complete sentence. Well, the story has come to an end. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have more videos available. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel.